Hi, I'm Ron Pars from parpools.com, and we're going to continue our, our look at the six keys to good spa and hot tub care as we look at key number three, which is cleaning. Now, cleaning is something that you have to do with whatever you happen to own, whether it's a pool, whether it's a spa, whether it's your car, inside the house, outside the house, you've got to maintain everything. One thing to keep in mind, as we talked about in the, uh, in the video about filtration, is that with four people using an average spa or hot tub, that's like having 120 people in an average size swimming pool. So with that much stuff getting in there, you've got to keep it clean and get some of that stuff out. We look at a couple, when, when we talk about cleaning, we talk about a, a, several basic things. The first item is regular vacuuming. Depending on how fastidious you are and how crazy you want to get, if you were to vacuum or or clean the spa with a with a tool such as this on a weekly basis, that's going to be great. And the the, the use of the vacuum is to is to vacuum up any grit, any dirt that may have either blown in or gotten tracked in off of your feet. And that's what vacuuming is, is for. The next item is regular wiping of the walls and, and the water line. And that's where stuff begins to grow. It's right at, the, at that edge where you have water coming into contact with the, with the spa surface. And you want to keep that area clean. And you keep it clean with either your bare hands or you can use a scrub brush. Maybe when you, when you drain and fill the spa, use a good surface cleaner like off the wall cleaner to take care of any excess greases and oils that have accumulated on there. And that will cut through there. You can also use a spa mitt. This is pre-treated. Open up the bag, put it on your hand, and just go around and wipe off the spa surface and then throw it away. That's regular wiping and, and, and cleaning. Next is dealing with debris. If your spa is outside, you may have leaves, you may have stuff, you may have bugs that, that just get into the spa. So having a, a little leaf net makes it handy and easy to get rid of that stuff. The next item is regular cleaning of the plumbing lines. Now the plumbing lines is where a lot of problems begin. And we're going to talk more about that when we, when we look at key number six, which is purge, drain, and refill the spa. But let's suffice to say that you want to do a regular cleaning of that when you drain and refill the spa. There's stuff that grows inside of those lines. Now your average spa or hot tub can have as much lineal feet as an average in-ground pool. You can easily have a hundred feet or more of pipelines and all those lines they will accumulate biofilms, debris, and so on that will eventually contaminate the rest of the spa. Some of those things we can we can take care of and we can treat chemically on a regular basis with a good natural enzyme. Enzymes go in and they consume organic material and organic contaminants. And that helps to cut down on your chemical usage. Other items that you want to keep, keep clean would be your spa cover. You can open up the spa cover, spritz a little bit of pristine mist in there, and that will help to keep some of the odor down in there. You can also clean the outside of the, of the spa cover itself. 303 is terrific for not only cleaning, but also protecting that, um, that, that spa cover surface. If you have a lot of people in there, you may want to consider using a floating sponge like this. And this actually absorbs excess greases and oils that do accumulate in there. Remember to clean your filter. We talked about that in the, in the filtration video. Make sure that you not only rinse the, the spa cartridge filter, but also chemically clean it about every six to eight weeks. Use a filter flosser to make cleaning easier. A significant reason of why you want to clean the spa and keep it clean on a regular basis is to prevent an unhealthy atmosphere. And we mean that in two ways. We mean it in a literal sense because when you have stuff growing in there, when you turn on the jets, a lot of that the, that excess bacteria, that can actually be aerosolized or turned into a mist and then you breathe it and then you end up coughing or you have respiratory distress. 
So we want to, we want to eliminate that. If you've ever had a rash when you've gotten out of a spa, it is due to an accumulation of bacteria at the water line. Or it can even be on the top of the spa. Many people come and, and, and tell us that, that they have a rash on their underarms and across the top of their back or on their um, on the backs of their of their thighs. And that's because their skin is in direct contact with biofilms and, and other areas that are contaminated with excess bacteria. We're going to take care of that in another in another video. Remember that when you have skin rashes, those are not necessarily allergic reactions to chemicals, but in reality, those are bacteria problems that have to be addressed. For more information, you can visit our website at parpools.com forward slash six spa keys. You can also feel free to email me at techhelp at parpools.com. In the meanwhile, enjoy the spa and thanks for listening.